Right now I'm going to give an example from a game in progress. If there were a gut check drawn right now, this player would lose two health here, two health here for four. They would gain one, two, three health. So overall they would lose one health. Now I'm going to demonstrate how an antibiotic card works. So say this player plays the antibiotic canamycin. First it says target player may remove up to two non-resistant pathogens from their pathogen zone. So these two pathogens are resistant to ampicillin and tetracycline, the other antibiotics in the game, but not canamycin. So they're removed from the game. Then it says must remove half of their non-resistant beneficial microbes rounded down. This player has three, so they remove one of those three from the game. Then that player must subtract one health, so they lose one health for being treated with antibiotics. This player is green, so they go from 11 back to 10. And then it says C plasmid rules. And what that means is that any microbes that survived treatment with this antibiotic become resistant to that antibiotic, just like in real life. So we find two of these resistance to canamycin cards. We put them on those two microbes, and now they're resistant to canamycin. If I played this card again, it would have no effect on this player. Now, if there were a gut check, instead of losing one health, as we showed at the beginning, this player would gain two health at a gut check. And after all, the object of the game is to have the most health. If you look at the board, if you get to zero health, you die. If you get to 50 health, you win. But usually, players are somewhere in the middle by the end of the game. The end of the game occurs when the draw pile is empty. So when a player takes the last card, each other player gets a turn, and there's a final gut check, not represented by a card, at the end of which the player with the most health wins.